And I'm Jordan. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the transcript. transcript. This week, the transcript crew explores the NPS teacher pay gap, relaxes with boys lax, gets cooking with Miss Bernhard, and learns about the rough life of being a police dog. Hi, I'm Kaylee Hunter Gasparini, and welcome back to Tell It Like It Is. Did you know that the average school teacher in the nearly 300 districts of Massachusetts earns $78,000 a year? The average here in Northampton, only $61,000. Do you see a problem there? The most recent school committee meeting saw teachers bringing this very problem up. Teachers have started to push for a 6% salary increase every year for the next three years before the school budget is due on April 15th. I talked to Ms. Heather Brown, Vice President of Northampton Branch of the Teachers Union. Our union is called the Northampton Association for School Employees, and I am the Vice President of that organization, and we represent um, about 550 people. So what happens every several years is that we negotiate with the school committee for our contract. And we have been talking with the school committee for a couple of months and requesting a, an increase in our salaries. We haven't had salary increases that go along with the rate of inflation or the cost of living in the past 10 to 20 years. So that's why teachers are speaking out at the school committee meeting and explaining their point. I guess one thing uh, that people should know is that, you know, it's not, it's not just about money. Having the stress of, you know, uh, reduced income and rising health care costs and all of those things um, doesn't really help us to do our jobs. I also talked to Ms. Jenny Podell to get another teacher's perspective on the salary increase. I do work about that much of pay gap difference in outside jobs. So I have two outside jobs besides what I do and I work in the summer, which make up the pay gap between this district and other districts. As I was talking to people that I know who aren't part of the school district, it's just not very well known that the pay gap exists unless you're looking up teacher salaries or interested in it. I think the generally Northampton community is unaware and would be surprised by the results when looking at that pay difference. I don't think we know. If our pay grade could be evened out with surrounding districts, I think overall, of course, it would improve things for me being a teacher here, but it could also improve our ability to hire well-educated and experienced staff. We had to accept that we needed to pay a fair wage and put the person at an appropriate step in order to hire somebody who could adequately fill a, a position here at the school. Though I reached out to the school committee, they did not provide commentary. If you want to put in your two cents about this matter, go to the next meeting Thursday, April 11th at 645 in the JFK community room. Where did the attackers go to dance? Lacrosse balls. Y'all ready for this? Over the winter, any returning lacrosse player received an email from former coach Matt Striebel announcing that he would no longer be coaching the group after seven seasons. Now, former assistant Peter Carberry is filling in his position as full time varsity head coach. In addition to a new coach, the team also acquired many new players, one of them being sophomore Jonathan Marshall. Despite never playing before, Marshall made his varsity start as goalie this past Wednesday. I sat down with him to find out his reasoning for playing and what it's been like so far. I played lacrosse because a lot of my friends were telling me I should and I had no spring sport to play, so I decided to play lax. Well, I mean, I wasn't exactly like thrown into goalie. I heard that Duval was out for the season, so I volunteered, I guess. But I kind of saw myself maybe playing some defense, but goalie works. My rose for lacrosse is probably hanging out with all the guys every day, good group of people. My bud is I still got the whole season to learn and play, and I don't really have a thorn in particular. It's pretty good. Uh, the mental aspects of soccer are very similar. Like, I play center back in soccer, and that's similar to goalie, where I'm communicating to the other defenders on where to be, and like when we're a man down, it's a lot of the same concepts as soccer, where one person's on ball and the other person is sliding between two players. So that's pretty similar. And then physically, I guess the agility is all that transfers, but that's about it. I also talked with veteran senior Mike McCarthy about this upcoming season. I kind of knew earlier than most that Street Bull wasn't going to step back for coaching, but 
I don't think it affected us a ton, even though Strebel is like a great coach and everything. But the process, like we don't do much off-season work. We try to do captains' practices at the beginning, but there's not a whole lot of like uh, like fall leagues or like anything like that. So we kind of just had to get together before the season. Carbs brings just a lot of energy. He's always like an upbeat kind of guy and just like he's always yelling and he wants us to have everything in order and he's like does everything by the book a lot and Strebel is more relaxed like any kind of like held back carbs a little bit even though like Strebel is like the head coach but carbs would still like kind of take over at some points. I think we just have to get better as a team and we're just like young and most of us haven't played with each other for that long and I know like I haven't played with a lot of kids on the team and we graduated our like whole offense last year so it'll be a little tough coming back from that. You can see Mike, Marshall and the rest of the boys lacrosse team play at home today at 4 p.m. against Chicopee. In other sports news, girls lacrosse is away in Westfield at 4 and baseball also has a home game against Amherst at 4. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Lulu Kesson. Hi, I'm Alexa, and welcome back to The Leftovers. This week, we are here with English teacher, Miss Bernhard. Hi, everybody. And we will be making a super easy pumpkin pie. Uh, would you like to start us off with our sure. first ingredient? Sure. Um, any recipe I make is going to be easy because I hate using recipes. I hate to measure. I like to just throw things in. But when you bake, you have to use measurements. Mm -hmm. um, and one of my daughters loves pumpkin pie, so I get a can of pumpkin. I usually get the organic kind. And the recipe is right on the back. That's all you need to know. You need two eggs. You need sugar. Some salt, pumpkin pie spice, and evaporated milk. Mm, that's the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so kind of just mix this all in a bowl and then go crazy. And actually, there is some nutrition in the pumpkin. There's a lot of uh, vitamin A. Mm -hmm. um, is that right? Yeah. So I like to think it's a vegetable pie, but I'm, I'm kidding myself. And the very last thing we need in this delicious mixture oh, yes. is the evaporated milk. Would you like to put that in there yes. for us, Ms. Bernheim? Yes, yes. Um, so, how long have you been a teacher? Well, I've been a teacher for 25 or 7 years. I started in Springfield for 5 years and I've been here since 1998. Uh, once you have your mixture at about this consistency, you will preheat your oven to 425, let it preheat for about 15 minutes, then turn it down to 350 and cook it for an hour to an hour and a half depending on your oven. So we have our beautiful pie here, as you can that see. That is lovely. Oh yeah, cheers. cheers. Mm, delicious. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tips for students. Um, you have to remember that really, even though we think we're each the center of the universe, we're not. And you have to remember that we're really just a speck of dust. Sometimes that's a little terrifying and sometimes it is a great relief. You don't have to do everything all the time and you certainly don't have to do it perfectly. You know, I think writing is great because you can meet people where they are and you can just help them write better. And um, reading is so wonderful. You can get into someone else's life and I really love it when students get into a book and get page turning and lose themselves in it. Um, it's pretty hard to lose yourself in a book in this day and age when there's so much fast electronics going around. Mm -hmm. So um, if people can read and enjoy a book and improve their writing, I feel like it's been a tremendous success. You know, the reason I'm content now is because I've I had a lot of time to live before I had a family and um, now I have two of my own kids and my husband has three kids and so I'm just happy uh, sharing my life with my family and when I get free time, I don't wander too far. I just mm -hmm. enjoy myself. All right, well, thank you so much, Ms. Bernhardt. Thank Ms. you, that was fun. This is a delicious pie we made together. So delicious. Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. 
Nine-year-old Sophie Cruz is recognized as one of the youngest activists for immigration reform. She was first recognized in the movement at age five when she delivered a handwritten letter to Pope Francis on behalf of all immigrants and their families. She was born in California to undocumented parents from Oaxaca, Mexico, and has since been invited to speak with President Obama during his presidency, to speak before the Supreme Court, and at the 2017 Women's March in Washington, D.C. In other news... The Valley has seen a few special new additions to its police forces in recent years. They have quickly become some of the most well-known officers because of their charisma and energy level. These are the dogs of the Valley's K-9 units, and although they are fun to play with, they also have a lot of responsibilities. We wanted to understand more about their responsibilities to the community and to their departments, so we went down to Amherst Police Department, where two new K-9 members have recently joined the force. Marvin actually came from Hungary. We tested things like we did environmental things, we banged on lockers, let him go on slippery floors, want him to go upstairs to see if th certain things startled him. We'd, we'd take a ball and we'd throw it in a giant pile of tires to see how long he would, he would hunt for it because we want a dog that has a strong work drive. When we found Marvin, we threw the ball in and he worked until he found the ball and that's kind of what we want for a police dog. Uh, every day he has to work, he's a working dog, so even on our days off we're doing something, we're doing obedience because he, he always needs that work. He's He's a very, very high drive dog. We do regular patrol officer things. If, if there's a canine related call, then they'll respond to it. You know, people always recognize him. If I go to a store or something, or even the motor vehicle stop, people will be like, hey, are you the guy that has Marvin? Like, I see Marvin, he has a social media page on Instagram. Uh, so a lot of people know him through that, and, and they always ask how he is. One of the things I like most is like, say that a crime occurs and the suspect takes off. It's really nice to say, hey, we found the person that did this, Marvin tracked him down and we found him. If it weren't for Marvin, then maybe he would have got away. So it's really nice to, if someone's afraid of something because someone showed up their house and took off, it's nice to say, hey, Marvin found this guy and you don't have to worry about that anymore. When we were training, they always say, trust your dog, trust your dog, trust your dog. So there was an incident down in South Amherst so Marvin went there and he found he found like a small ring that was ended up being some evidence. He alerted to it. So then I was like, all right, let's search for more evidence. So I told him to search and he, he kept trying to go into the wood, kept going. I was like, you know, what? I should trust my dog. I thought maybe he smelt a rabbit or had to go to the bathroom in the woods or something. So I, just, I dropped my leash and I let him go. He went into the woods and then he was laying down behind a tree. I was like, oh, that's strange. So I went and looked and he had found more evidence that we didn't know was even there. So that was one time I was really proud of him. Thanks for watching, and don't hesitate to pay Douglas a visit in Officer Wallace's office on the main floor. I'm Amelia Tamayo, and this has been In Other News. Bye! Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching! Be sure to come to Team Require Editions on Tuesday at 6.30. And Northampton's Editions on Wednesday at 6.30. Be, be there or be flat! flat.